with Mike Yagley from Cobra Golf, and we've got the F7 driver here. And one of the, I want to say buzzwords, or something that is constantly marketed and, and pushed out when clubs come out these days is center of gravity. You and I talked about center of gravity at the PGA show a couple of years ago, and I wanted to kind of rehash that conversation because I want to know why people should care about center of gravity and really what it is. Maybe we can reverse that. We'll do what it is and then why people should care about it. That's Yeah, that's a, it's a really, really good question. It's something that we, no pun intended, we really, really grind on. Where is that center of gravity? <laughs> the funny thing about center of gravity is it is a what, right? But more importantly, it's a where. Because I've heard people say, well, point to the center of gravity. And it's not a thing you can actually see, especially on a golf club. Okay. Because the center of gravity is defined, getting a little nerdy on you right now, it's defined where literally the center of the mass of this object or any object is. Okay. Okay. And in this particular case, the center of gravity is, and you can say you know, it's going to be somewhere near the middle, right? Roughly. Okay. okay. In this particular head, it's right about, we'll use something even a little pointier, it's probably right about there. Okay, at the end of that screw. Okay. okay. There's nothing there. I can't point to the center of gravity because the center of gravity, again, like I said, is the, is the middle of all this mass. And so you've got some lightweights, you've got a heavy weight, right? You've got a lightweight, and you've got a crown, you've got a face plate, and all these things have different weight. You can feel how heavy that is mm -hmm. relative to that, right? Yeah, it's a lot heavier. So that has a huge influence on where the center of gravity is. Right? I put a really heavy faceplate on and that center of gravity is going to move forward because that mass tends to move that center of gravity further forward. Okay. Right? Um, why is it important to a golfer? The way the club feels to the golfer, the way the club is delivered by that golfer is highly dependent upon the center of gravity. It's interesting. It's, we talk a lot about how the launch characteristics are influenced by the center of gravity. Mm -hmm. Um, let's just pick on one particular aspect of what the center of gravity does for you while you're swinging it. Okay. Okay. If I put this heavy weight in this back port, center of gravity gets pulled back. Okay. Right? And it, here's the, the crazy thing. The box in which center of gravity lives on typical golf clubs. You're going to, I think you're going to melt a lot of minds with this one. It's really kind of small. It really is. It's not a huge box, right? I mean, it's, it's a little box about this big right in here. I like how you say there's nothing there for me to look at, but every yeah, time I know, point you point in look, there, I'm like look, wrapping yeah. my head around. Yeah. yeah, it's like a dog. <laughs> look at my finger, right? Um, so it's this little box right about here. The crazy thing is, even though that box is relatively small, let's say we're moving the, the center of gravity just a couple millimeters by moving the weights around, and we're talking about that big. Mm -hmm. We could move it enough that you would go, oh, this club is horrible, and then move it back, and you'd be like, oh, this club is the best thing I've ever felt in my life. The human, the human's ability to perceive small changes in mass properties is absolutely amazing to me. It's like somebody, you know, raining in three pointers from 35 feet out over and over and over again. You saw my high school films. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Right. Um, when you see Ricky Fowler get a golf shot and you look at it and you're like, how did he bend a six iron around a tree and then hit it three feet from the pin from 195 yards out, <laughs> right? We have an uncanny knack to do spectacular things. So at times I'm amazed at what we can feel, but at other times I'm like, well, humans are pretty amazing machines. So back to what it does for you. If I put the heavy weight port in the back setting and the center of gravity moves back a little bit, mm -hmm. while you're swinging, the shaft axis and the center of gravity, which is now moved back, so let's say it's back about here, they try to align during the swing due to centripetal forces. Okay. Okay? As that happens, the head does this, because here's the shaft axis. So literally, the club kicks forward, gives you more dynamic loft. Mm -hmm. Okay? Gives you a little more launch angle, might increase spin a little bit, but for some players, it's a much better angle of attack of the club head. Okay? Move that, conversely, move this weight to the forward setting, now the center of gravity moves forward, and you get a little less dynamic loft. It can be hundreds of RPM spin, it can be a huge deal on the feel of the golf club. Mm -hmm. um, so just that tiny little change, and we're not, we're talking about a 12 gram weight on a 205 gram head. 
So it's not. So not that, a huge. Difference. No, it's not huge from an engineering yeah. standpoint. Like, wow, that's not that big a deal. But it is when you look at the percentage change um, inside that box, right? If the total throw is let's say three millimeters, right? Mm -hmm. um, three millimeters in our world and your world as you're swinging it is a, actually a very big deal. Now that's center of gravity. Okay. Yeah. Um, it also has a huge impact on the moment of inertia, and those two are tied, right? Yep. Yeah. So literally, you put this mass here, and you've got a much lower moment of inertia than you do when it's back here. And same deal, my imaginary little center of gravity. I'm not going to yeah. reach around Go ahead this time. Look, yeah. <laughs> um, the moment of inertia is defined by where the mass is relative to that center of gravity. I move this mass way out here, and now this moment arm is much longer, so my moment of inertia is much higher. It actually goes with the square of that moment arm. So moving it from here, which is darn near right below the CG, mm -hmm. to back here, huge increase in moment of inertia. So those are coupled. Sorry to couple the center of gravity with the moment of inertia story, but there it's hard to decouple those two. Okay, so talking about, you know, the different weight ports that are in here and moving the center of gravity location and its effect on moment of inertia, if I take this heavier weight, this 12 gram weight here, mm -hmm. and move it, you know, from the front to the back, obviously the CG is going to come back a little bit yes. and the MOI is going to go up. Yes. And if I move it from the back in the center to heelward, what's that going to do to the center of gravity and the MOI? So. Since the center of gravity is right about there, the distance from here to there is relative to the center of gravity is smaller. Okay. Okay. So moment of inertia goes down a little bit. Okay. Right. So it's not necessarily as forgiving in that heel position, but we're moving the center of gravity heelward a tiny bit, which causes during the swing a little bit more closure because that shaft axis wants to line up with that center of gravity. Okay. Which causes the face normal to okay. go just a little bit more to the left, which means you're going to hit a little less to the right. So dynamically, it's giving you a little bit more face closure because it's doing that. Um, so if you're average player, uh, they are going to hit it a little less right, which is a good thing. Which is a good thing for a lot of a lot of people. Yeah. Um, you? Um, I have no problem. <laughs> Hitting it left. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay hitting it left. Whatsoever. Yeah, I can hook it in my sleep, right? I could hook a putt. Um, <laughs> so I actually like to put the weight in the back position. Okay. Because I was also blessed with, and I didn't know this as a kid, played a lot of golf as a kid, and uh, I had incredibly high launch, low spin. I've had it my entire life, right? Long before anybody knew that that was a really good thing to do, I'd be out there playing with the other kids, and I'm swing it against some kid, he's probably swinging 100 miles an hour, just a brute, right? I'm swinging about 80 miles an hour, and I'm knocking it by him. And he's just getting madder and madder, because his ball has a lot of spin and it's flying like that, right? And I launch it super high, low spin, and it just goes forever. So for the players that literally don't need to knock spin down, mm -hmm. right? I would leave that weight in the back, right? because that's going to be the most forgiving and probably the longest shot they can hit. Okay. Okay. Somebody who actually spins it just a tiny bit too much, right? Mm -hmm. Move that weight in the front. It's going to de-loft a little bit okay. because of that dynamic lofting we're talking about. They're going to need a lot less spin. Move it into the heel and you're going to hit a little bit less right. So those those are what the three settings do to do for you from a spin standpoint. Um, it does get interesting. You get speed differences too. Carry on. All right. Okay. So back that same order. You put the weight in the back position, and again, like I said, the CG moves back. You get a more dynamic loft. Okay. Well, now, as you hit the ball, right, with more dynamic loft, the face isn't as normal to the ball. It's got, you're doing this to it. Mm -hmm. You get less ball speed. Okay. Right, you get more launch angle, you get a little more spin, but you get less ball speed. You move the C, the weight forward, CG moves forward, club D loss, ah, more normal contact, more efficient, more 
or more speed. More speed, yeah. So that front position is, if, if a player can handle it, if they don't need the additional MOI or forgiveness, that front position is really interesting because you get more speed, less spin. It's a longer shot, but you've got to be really careful. If you need the moment of inertia, keep it back there. So for the person who wants to put that weight in the front, mm -hmm. and because we'll say they need it for spin issues. Yep. With the, the weight being so close to the front, is it beneficial for them to change this adapter to have a little bit more loft on the club? Have you done this before? Uh, once or twice. You're really good at this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Um, because it will de-loft. Um, way, the way I would do this, literally, is I would find the right shaft. Okay. Right? Most players, you know, they kind of know what kind of shaft they like from weight and a flex standpoint. Mm -hmm. And they can feel it. They get a you know, more consistent delivery. They might get a little more club head speed with the right shaft, right? Get that shaft dialed in. Get the loft and loft dialed in. Loft and lie dialed in. Okay. Right? So let's say you get it to about, you know, in this particular setting, let's say you're at 9.5. Okay. Okay. And you got the 9.5 and you hit the 9s, like that's a little too low. You hit the 10.5, it's a little bit too high. You're like, 9.5s feel just about right. But it still seems like it's spinning just a tiny bit too much. And if that weight was in the back, move it forward. Right? This would be the fine tuning for me. Okay. When you really want to dial the club in, right? The most important thing about this golf club are all of the things that we do to put in here such that you don't have to think about it at all. It's really forgiving inherently. It has great ball speed inherently. It's got good feel inherently. Your job is to make sure it's pointed in the right direction, and then if you've got to tweak that weight, do that, right? All the rest of it, we've done all the thinking, we've done all the worrying, we've done all the grinding. Um, that's good. Don't let yeah. my don't let my head get in the way. No. Don't want to overthink things. No, I well, no, that's good. Yeah. Ultimately, when you're standing over the shot, I don't want you to think about anything but the shot. That's the moment of truth. Yeah. Yes. Take, get ready to take the swing and see what happens. Yep. Perfect.